Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Mejia and I'm here to present you our work in transcriptomic pancancer diagnosis. This is a study by Universidad de los Andes in Colombia. So, as we all know, cancer is a really big problem and just in 2020 there were 19 million new cases and almost 10 million uh, deaths due to cancer. Specifically talking about uh, diagnosis, uh, it is a really difficult task because it involves many tissues, many cancer types, it is time consuming and is usually dependent in the expertise level of the doctor. So as a proposed solution, uh, we, we seek to use uh, genetic expression vectors to predict the type of cancer or the type of normal tissue in a given sample. So we have to ask ourselves what public data do we have to study uh, this problem? And the answer is that there are uh, two major databases in this context. The first one is uh, the TCGA, or the Cancer Genome Atlas, which is the biggest cancer multiomics resource. It has right now 33 cancer types, but it has a major limitation, which is that just about 7% uh, of the data is taken from healthy controls. So to complement for healthy data, uh, we're going to use the Genotype Tissue Expression Project, which, uh, uh, which is also called the GTEx, uh, and it's basically the healthy TCGA counterpart. Right now, it has more than 17,000 uh, RNA-seq samples. But uh, when using these databases, we have a problem, which is that uh, the TCGA and GTEx data are not comparable. And this is due to differences in the genome of reference, in the alignment algorithms, and in the quantification algorithms. Uh, as a consequence, uh, some works have been proposed to try to join the GTEx and the TCGA in a single database. The first work was by Vivian et al. and they basically uh, standardized the pipeline of quantification. And an expansion of that work, uh, which was made by Wonk et al., uh, used standardized quantification and also did batch correction and category elimination uh, with the drawback uh, that they were uh, finally losing about 8,000 samples. Using those resources, uh, some related work to ours have been made uh, in the context of a cancer diagnosis using the TCGA and the GTEx. The first one was by Queen et al, and it was a detection model which fitted um, a statistical distribution to a healthy tissue and then predicted any outlier uh, as a cancer sample. The second work uh, was by Hong et al, and it, was, uh, it, it had two multi-layer perceptron, one multitask and one normal multilayer perceptron uh, and use them to classify disease state, tissue, and cancer subtype. Uh, both works obtain uh, really good results, so one could think that uh, the problem is solved. Uh, but the bad news is that <laughs> there are some problems with translation bias. So uh, hypothetically, just imagine that here we have a scattered plot that should be in a really high dimensional space but uh, here we have the TCGA cloud. So what we hypothesized it, it was that uh, the GTEx cloud was not overlapping over here, but was separated over here. So uh, one way to prove that is, the, is, is training a linear SVM and to classify uh, the data source uh, in a joint data set and look at the metrics. So, of course, uh, we did it, and what we found was that you could linearly separate uh, both databases uh, and obtain perfect results. With that, um, previous results lose clinical relevance. So, to correct that translation bias, we applied a simple technique, which is uh, CETA score uh, standardization, and uh, what we were aiming here was to obtain these overlapping clouds. And as you can see here in the separation histograms and in the metrics, uh, is that uh, the translation biases are corrected. Just as a final uh, thing here, uh, as the Vivian et al. data set had much more samples, we fixed it as our experimental framework. So 
uh, as we have chosen our data, we can propose candle, which is a multinomial logistic regression and is the simplest, the simplest gradient-based approach to this problem. In a nutshell, what we're doing is to take an input vector and multiplying it by a learnable matrix and then applying a softmax over that to obtain a probability vector. Uh, we would like Candle to answer a simple question here, which is uh, which cancer type or tissue type does this sample belong to? And we're going to do, to do it in two frameworks. The first one is a classification, multi-label classification, and the second one is all versus one detection. So in the output layer here, we're going to use 63 neurons for multi-label classification and just two neurons for all versus one detection. As candle is really simple, we can use um, the W matrix to uh, obtain transparent interpretation. Uh, one final remark that we can that we need to make is that uh, there have been previous findings from representation uh, learning that uh, point out that a multinomial logistic regression is a good choice in this type of problem. Uh, here we are lo we're looking at our experimental setup. And uh, just to summarize, the GTEx has uh, 30 uh, tissue types and the TCGA has 33 cancer types. We are going to use uh, random uh, standard partitions and uh, we are going to train our model using a cross entropy uh, loss that is weighted by the number of samples in training set. For uh, multi label classification, our main results can be seen here. And uh, the first thing we did was to uh, re-implement the Hunk model in our experimental framework. And what we got was that uh, the overall accuracy was a little lower. So what we think is that uh, the Hunk's method is taking advantage of the translation biases. Uh, after that, we uh, trained Candle in our framework and we obtained a 7.3 uh, improvement in balanced accuracy, which makes Nout Candle uh, the state of the art in this task. We also think that a uh, candle's simplicity uh, helps it to generalize better when biases are removed. Now for our main results in all versus one detection, uh, what you're seeing here is a summary plot in which each point represents a candle model which is trained to uh, detect one specific cancer type. Uh, with that, we obtained a mean max F score of 78% and an average AP uh, of 76.1%. This is not a uh, state of the art. However, it, it has comparable performance with respect to the state of the art method by Queen et al. Uh, an interesting observation here was that generally the worst performing classes that you can see over here with names uh, did have a really low number of training samples. To interpret candle, what we did uh, was to look at the weights in the adult view matrix. So for each class, here we are seeing class 10, we selected the top uh, 1000 genes which had uh, the uh, biggest weights in absolute value. After that, uh, we sorted uh, all our genes based on how many times uh, they were selected in those one and those top 1,000 genes for each class. And then we thresholded that list in the value of three, so we ensured that the final list only contained um, genes that were important for at least three cancer types. Uh, our final set was of about uh, 2,000 genes. Uh, we took that list and performed uh, gene ontology biological processes enrichment analysis in which we observed that developmental and morphogenesis pathways were overrepresented in the set that we derived from Campbell's interpretation. To summarize, here we have some take-home messages. The first one is that batch effects appear even with standard quantification of RNA-seq profiles. The second one is that there is no need for a complex model in RNA-seq-based cancer diagnosis as candle is really, really simple. And I think uh, the most important is the last one, which is that machine learning cancer diagnosis is feasible and can offer valuable biological insights. Also, to promote further research in transcriptomic pancancer diagnosis, we will make all our resources publicly available. Having said that, 
I want to thank you and I'm happy uh, to answer any question.